And now, join Pastor Ronnie Mitchum for today's message. Amen. Okay, so today I want to get into the message entitled, A Total Remodel. And last week I laid the foundation about what's going to take place after tribulation and uh, after the millennial reign. We talked a little bit about that. So I want you to look in Revelation chapter 21 and 1. Let's pray before we start. Father, I pray you will let your people's ears hear your word today. God, speak to us. Let us know, God, your truth, so that, Lord, we can follow you and find eternal peace with you, Father. I ask that you will let this word take, find fertile ground, take root and grow in each heart and life, and we give you praise for it today in Jesus' my name. Amen. Revelations chapter 21, verse 1, And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. Now the only other time in the Bible that we see this mentioned is in Isaiah 65 and 17, where it says, For behold, I create new heavens and a new earth, and the former shall not be remembered, nor come into mind. Now the prophet Isaiah also said in 66 and 22, For as the new heavens and the new earth, which I will make, shall remain before me, saith the Lord, so shall your seed and your name remain. And then Peter in Second Peter said this, Nevertheless, we according to his purpose look for the new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. Peter also went on to say in that same chapter, but back up in verse 10, But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of person ought you be and all holy conversation and godliness, looking forward and hastening to the coming of the day of the Lord of God, wherein the heavens, being on fire, shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Now this will take place at the conclusion of the thousand-year age, in other words, the millennial reign. So this is where we're at. We're at the very last chapter in the Bible. We know in the beginning God created, now we're seeing at the end, He's now going to create a new heaven and a new earth. And so we have to realize that everything that we're seeing coming into this time that we're at uh, in our life, that we get caught up in our little life and we think this is it. And we talk about heaven. But listen, there's a whole lot that's going to be taking place after our death or if we happen to go, you know, whatever happens. But either way, if you're saved, you've got a great future ahead of you. And everybody plans for their future, and they, well, most people do, and, but try to anyway. Some people just can't because they don't have the income to really prepare much. But we're all trying for the future. We say, well, you know, I need to do this, I need to do that. But the real future we need to be preparing is with eternity with God. And we're going to talk about this today. But Second Peter chapter 3, verse 7 said this, but the heavens and the earth which are now, by the same word, are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. Now, I want to talk to you there. In verse 10 we read where it says, pass away. Now, in the Greek, that meaning is to pass from one condition to another. It does not mean annihilation. In other words, it doesn't mean it's completely destroyed. It just means that it's from one condition to another. So we have to understand that this indicate, does not indicate an elimination or destruction of, but rather a remaking of heaven and earth. And in the Greek, the new in the Greek means freshness with respect to age. So a complete remodel is going to be taking place. <laughs> oh, praise God. And why is God going to remodel it? Because of all the sin, the corruption, the ungodliness, the perversion. Everything that the fall of man created 
in the life that we live today. War and destruction and famine and pestilence. All these things that we see now. God says, enough of that. I'm cleaning the earth of it. And He's going to do a complete remodel. It's just like an old house. If you buy an old house and you go in and remodel that thing, you got your work cut out for you. I'm telling you, when we remodeled that little yellow building to be our sanctuary, we hauled off truckloads and truckloads of stuff that they had put in that little yellow building. Brother Stan used to load his truck up, and he'd leave here. And I said, Brother, some of that might fall off. He said, I'm not looking in my rearview mirrors. I'm just keeping on going. We remodeled that thing. Brother Glenn was so good to come help us. I had an old horse out here that I wanted to get rid of, and Brother Glenn said he would help us if I give him that horse. And uh, I didn't know Brother Glenn really well at the time. He didn't come to church here. But he came and helped me. And uh, the reason I want to get rid of that horse, because that horse had bit me, tried to kick me all the time. I'm telling you all, I'm not a big horse fan. And that's why I don't get invited a lot of times in Texas and Oklahoma and different places, because I slip up and say that. And they, you know, they get a little upset. Well, I'm glad for those that enjoy horses, but I... I've just always, I got thrown off one when I was a kid. I didn't throw off, I had to bail off of him because my cousin put me up on there and my two cousins, older cousin was standing there and the one on the horse, he looked at my other cousin and said, watch this. And he slapped that horse on the rear end. It took off with me heading for the road and I seen the road and I dove off that horse into the ditch. And uh, I have rode horses since, but I'm always weary of them. And if people enjoy horses, that's great. Like I say, one day I'm going to enjoy riding a horse when we come back with Jesus, amen, at the end of tribulation. I'll be glad to mount that horse that day and ride him right on in here. But praise God, you and I have to know that that complete remodel is going to take care of all that because of what the demonic spirits and all that be removed from here. Ephesians 2 and 2 says, We're in time past, you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. And so God's going to redo it all. He's not going to destroy it. He's just going to redo it. So again, if you get an old house and you're going to remodel that thing, you know, termites get into wood, wood rots, water gets in from the roof, there's rot, all that corruption. So the roof gave way, gave up from some water, and now the, the, the wood has been corrupted it's been contaminated, and now it's got soft and rotten, so it's got to be removed. That's the way, in a sense, you can look at the world. God did not plan for this world to be the way it is today. He wanted to walk with us. He wanted to talk with us. He wanted to be with us. He made us for His, His creation to have fellowship with us and to love us, but man chose to go another direction, and he always has. That's why today you can find people on Sunday there's a lot of people who never think about coming to church on Sunday because they think it's a waste of time. Really what they're doing is saying, I don't really care about the hereafter. I only worry about today. And I'm going to enjoy myself today because life's short. Yes, it is. The Bible says it's as a vapor. It's here, then it's gone. So you and I have to understand, are we dead once we die? Is this life over? No, it's not. And the Bible says those that are saved are going to go be with the Lord, but those that are not saved are going to be in eternal damnation. Now, the faith in Christ is where we must be. And our faith in Christ means we want to learn more about Christ and learn more about what's going to take place. We are blessed as Christians to be the only people in the world that have a book that tells the future. You see, when I hear these politicians talk about all this... Uh, stuff about the world. I know they're, it's just ignorant what a lot of them come out of their mouth. They have no clue what the Bible has to say, nor do they care what the Bible has to say. But they're worried about the environment. First of all, let's just be very clear. No politician really cares about the environment. He cares about how he's going to get his pocket stuffed. That's all politicians care about. And they'll pass bills and lie as long as they get money I mean, we are just corrupt to the core with politicians. Not a one of them you can believe. And I'm going to say this. Everybody listens to all these conservative talk shows. And oh, well, they, those talk shows, most of them men, the reason they fight with the other ones and this one, that one, so they can get some publicity and then they can each promote each other's book and sell each other's book. Don't buy into all the baloney. I've dealt with the media. I know what they are. 
they are corrupt. Even the conservative ones, I wouldn't give 10 cents for the majority of them. There's a few that are decent, but most of them are all about the money and making money. And they complain about the politicians, and they're just as guilty. So this is a corrupt world. It's a corrupt government. How many dictators have destroyed millions of lives for their pocket and their greed to get what they want? To rule and be dictators over innocent people. And little children having limbs blown off, starving and hungry because some dictator decides he's going to bomb or gas his own people or starve them out because they don't get in line with him. Now I'm going to tell you, that's the world we live in today. Many men in this room have fought in battle and combat, and they've seen the horror of war. People say, well, we should do this, we should do that. Let me tell you, there is nothing worse than war. The horror of war. And people should, and leaders should, take seriously before they go into war with anybody. Because you can't fight wars by being kind. You have to be vicious, and you have to go in, and you have to win the war. But the day's world in America, we got politicians trying to pull strings, getting our young men killed out there because they want to keep this or do that. It, you know, they want to hold up this. That they, they worry about Islam more than they worry about the soldiers who are out there fighting. I'm going to tell you, if I was the leader and I send men to battle, first of all, I'd be on my knees praying to God, is this the right thing to do? And then I would hit you with everything I have and I would try to end that war as soon as I could because I know that soldiers still get paid but those families in those countries that are in this war are starving and being bombed and their homes are being destroyed. Their lives are being disrupted. How many people in World War II's lives were completely upended in this country? We not only had one war, we was over there helping Europe fight the Germans. And when we were, the Japanese decided it'd be a great time to attack us and attack Pearl Harbor. And then we went to war with them. We were fighting two wars at one time. My granny, I spoke to her, Granny Mitchell, one time. And I said, how did you meet Grandpa Mitchell? She said, well, back then, during World War II, she said they'd send a bus up here. And said so they'd get us up here in the country. They'd send that bus, and we'd drive, ride that bus to Panama City Beach, Florida. So they had a big shipyard there, and they still do to this day. And they said, we would get paid to help build them ships for the war. And she said, you get paid by how many of the, uh, what are the, now the, uh, like when you weld, you got the piece left? Nobody's a welder in here, huh? <laughs> anyway, whatever you iron with the little we welding rod. Okay, we'll just call it a welding rod for somebody. Says none of you know what this is anyway. Right? <laughs> Neither do I. I'm just telling a story. So my my granny said that she'd get paid. Everybody get paid by how many of those they showed gave in at the end of the day. So you'd keep them. And she said your grandpa would come over to me and give me some of his, so I'd get more money. And she said, so then we started liking each other. I thought, that's a pretty good way to meet a girl. Grandpa was smart. And so that's how they met. But their lives were upended because everybody. You know, I remember when we lived in Port Natchez, Texas. All the houses there, the foundations were crumbling up and all messed up in the houses. And they said because those houses were built during World War II and they didn't have the... The, the iron to put in the metal, you know, the, to put it. I know these names. I just can't think. Rebar, there we go. See, really, I'm just testing y'all. That's what I did. Make, make sure y'all awake listening. Put that rebar down in that concrete to make the concrete strong. They didn't have it, so they just poured the concrete. And then all the foundation would turn it because people were doing without. You think about all the children whose lives were destroyed, and they were being bombed, and their homes being destroyed, and they spent most of their time in bomb shelters. You think about the Jews who were rounded up and taken to gas chambers, stripped and gassed to death their children. They stacked the shoes up in piles 
And they killed them like they were rodents, like they were nothing. Because the Jews had decided that Jews were worthless. And they killed them, thousands and thousands of them. In gas chambers and shot them and piled them in huge holes and just buried them up. That's the sickness of this world. That's the corruption of sin. A man who was so full of hate and division. This is what we've seen in this world. And God promises us that one day, hallelujah, that all that's going to come to an end. There'll be no more. Hallelujah. Somebody give a little hand clap and pray. Sin will lose its grip, will lose its hold on this world. All the little environmentalists so worried about us digging a hole and burning some coal. Worried about a fruit fly or some little hoot owl and tadpole. All the foolishness. God says it's going to be done with. So I believe in taking care of what God gives us. I believe in taking care of this earth. But I also know people have to live and have jobs. And so when it overcomes, I tell you what, they probably can not have to worry because if God really thinks it's necessary for some little hoot owl or spot, spotted uh, rat to run around, and whatever they want to saw, some little fish, if God sees fit, he'll make some more. He got the blueprint. Amen. So I don't bind all their nonsense. We got a sissified world now. Men are becoming like girls. Girls want to be men. My Lord, I can't help it. I go into a restaurant. I don't care how manly she looks. I don't care how manly she talks. I still can't help but say thank you, ma'am. They give me a look, and I say, too late. I already got my sandwich. Because <laughs> you know what they say about when they don't like you and they're making your food. Mm, I don't have to tell you. Don't nobody make Brother Turner mad because he's cooking that barbecue for us. 27, get on his good side. <laughs> I get a little suspicious when some member that has been getting, maybe don't like me too much is insistent that I eat what they made at <laughs> these meals. Like, you got that specially for me? <laughs> oh, my. That, that millennial reign, though, is going to be changed because God's going to make you know, reign over us for a thousand years. Think about that. The reign of Christ for a thousand years. No more governments. No more Saddam Husseins. No more Hitlers. Only Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Reigning and ruling. Praise God. Praise God. But God says that's not, that's not even enough. He wants more to happen. So, <clears throat> with that million years on earth, we need to understand that at that time, this great change is going to take place. There will be untold millions of people on this earth. Now, a misconception by a lot of people is that at the end of tribulation, everybody's going to be dead. That ain't what's going to happen. There's going to be people who live through tribulation. And those that live through tribulation are going to the millennial reign. And they'll have an opportunity to accept Christ. And those who... Are they going to continue to have babies? All that's going to take place. Babies are going to be born. God's going to give them opportunity during that middle rain to accept Christ. And a lot of people, it's hard for them to understand. They say, well, I think it's tribulation. I say, no, it's not. No, it's not. God's got a million year, a thousand year reign there. And he's going to, there's going to be people carrying on life. But the difference is, not going to be no dictators. There ain't going to be no rulers that are evil. No crooked politicians. Just Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. And he's going to take care. So that include this, this millennial time is going to include glorified saints, which will no doubt hopefully number in the millions, and also include Israel along with all the Gentiles who accepted Christ during the kingdom age. The Jews and Gentiles will, have, will not have glorified bodies uh, like you and I who... We're going to be raptured, right? They're not going to have glorified bodies. So we have to understand that the Lord's got to do something with the vast numbers of these people while He remodels earth. So the thing is that's going to happen is the Lord's going to transport them to heaven and as that new Jerusalem, hallelujah, and hold them there 
until we see the new earth completed the way God wants it. Now, let me say this to you. When we come back, it's going to be the most beautiful place you've ever seen or ever dreamed of. And I can tell you, America alone has some beautiful places in this country. Oh, Lake Tahoe is one of the most beautiful places. I've always wanted to go over to Yellowstone National Park. I ain't made it yet. Maybe I will. But I, I would love to go there in Glacier. My sister lived in California. She'd go to Yosemite over there and said it was beautiful, that big waterfall. And you go out in Utah and different places, the mountains, Rocky Mountains. I mean, it's a beautiful country down to the beaches in Florida. And if you like the colder beaches out on the west and east coast, whatever you like. It's a beautiful, beautiful country. I've been blessed to be in almost every state in this great union in the lower 48. Some of the ones right up at Canada and north of, north of New York I haven't been to. But most of them I've been to. And it's a beautiful country. But it's a beautiful planet. It's a, it's God made great beauty. There's even beauty in the desert. You know, I mean, we come from a woody area. So I remember when I was a young truck driver, I was in out in Nevada one time, and I stopped and was getting something to eat, and I was talking to the people working. I only had a few people in there. And I said, where do you people live out here? I said, oh, we live down by the creek. And so I said, how do y'all stand out having no trees, no grass? They said, oh, we do around where we live. We got trees and stuff. We don't live out here in the middle of the desert. But some people did live in the middle of the desert. I, I mean, I've never understood that. I don't have attraction to the desert myself. But in itself, it is a beautiful place, like New Mexico is beautiful. I mean, there's just so many beautiful places in this great country. Niagara Falls, I mean, what a beautiful place. But the thing is that when God remodels it, it's going to be even better. <laughs> Hallelujah. I mean even better. The only difference is going to be there's not going to be any oceans to separate us. There won't be seas. There'll be rivers and creeks and ponds and lakes. But there will not be no more oceans like there is now. They're going to be done away with. God's going to create where we can travel and go. And oh, it's going to be a glorious time. But all that brings me to us remembering. Is people say, well, that seems impossible that all this would happen. But, you know, that's the only explanation we could have, that God would transport all these people and all of us to heaven while He remodels earth. And then He's going to bring back down and be on the earth. And you say, well, how can that? Well, let me say, uh, Matthew 19, 26 says, With God, all things are possible. Be sure to join us again next week for the conclusion of this message. Welcome, our friends in Uganda. I pray you enjoyed our message today. We pray it's been a blessing to your heart and to your life. We want to lead you in a prayer today. To those that are already saved. And those that already know the Lord Jesus as your Lord and Savior, but also those who have not made that decision, we want to give you an opportunity to surrender your life to Jesus Christ. The greatest decision you'll ever make in your life. And he will change your life. To, to the better. Say this prayer with us, Lord Jesus. Twagala Odemu Okusabakunonti Christo. I ask you into my heart to save me to wash me and to cleanse me as I confess my sin to you Lord and I surrender my life to you
With faith in Jesus' finished work at the cross. Amen. 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 Oh, we're so glad to have been a part of you and to our friends in Uganda. We appreciate you. It's my good friend David Sublime. He's a musician in our church. And a dear brother. That we love and appreciate. Thank you for joining us today. Be back with us next week. As we preach Christ and Him crucified so that you may grow and be strengthened. God, God bless you. We invite you to contact Pastor Ronnie by emailing rmbroadcast at yahoo.com. And please send any prayer requests to rmbroadcast at yahoo.com or call 281-324-9033. Also, please visit our website at victoryandpraise.com our Facebook page at facebook.com slash VNPWC and our YouTube channel, Victory and Praise Worship Center. Our church is located at 21907 FM 2100 in Crosby, Texas, zip code 77532. And don't forget, Pastor Ronnie's book, The Cost of Colors, A Coach's Story, is available on Amazon.com and BarnesandNoble.com. Finally, if you would like to donate to this ministry and keep the gospel going forth through this work, you can do so on our website. Again, that address is VictoryAndPraise.com. Just look for the donations link. You may also send a donation in the form of a check or a money order to 21907 FM 2100 Crosby, Texas 77532 Thank you